Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how to size and plan a vegetable garden. So just how big of a vegetable garden do you need? That is an interesting question and one without a simple answer. Everyone's going to garden a little differently and furthermore there's many resources out there and some of them kind of conflict with one another. But even after you've figured out how big you want it, you're still going to have to lay it out and plant it. Now this is part of a series on starting a vegetable garden that we're doing so have a look at the previous videos and be on the lookout for other ones because you're probably hopefully you're going to find them very helpful and useful. But um, we're basically going to try to go through the steps on and you know thought process on sizing the garden properly and then how to plan it and lay it out so we don't make any simple mistakes. And hopefully you guys find this useful so let's dive into it. Okay, so just how large of a garden do we need? Well, let's go through some old knowledge or rules of thumb. Uh, there's a saying that you need at least 100 square feet per person in your household. So a household of four would need 400 square feet, which would be around 20 by 20 garden. And to be honest, 20 by 20, which is six by six meters, is a pretty good size. You can get a lot of species in there and decent quantity. And that's what you're looking at right there is my garden, about a 20 by 20, and it works pretty well. Um, Additionally, though, there are some calculators out there where you can calculate the size, and these are based on university publications, uh, which are based on surveys of actual yields from farms that grow these various crops. So you could essentially get a good estimate as to how many plants you would need to feed so many people in your family, or how, much, how long a row would need to be, those kinds of things. If you've been gardening a while, they're great resources, and I'll link to them below, but if not, I would stay away from it. If you're a new gardener, you need to focus on learning how to garden growing and harvesting your vegetables um, and it's important that's the reason I'm saying it is you can bite off more than you can chew if you if your eyes get bigger than your stomach so to speak and you start trying to grow food for an entire year when you haven't even broken ground yet um, but you know if you're running a farmer's market stand this could be great uh, that plus your experience you could probably uh, figure out exactly how much money you could make but uh, if you are new and have never gardened before I really ad ad advise against trying to do too much in the first year um, it's like trying to run a marathon without training in 30 minutes or less. Um, there's a really good chance you're going to encounter some big obstacles. It could be pests, poor soil, disease fungus that will hamper you, or just the sheer amount of work and learning how to garden. Gardening is something you can't just do it by the book. You, you need experience and you have to earn it. And if you try to go too big too soon, you might get discouraged and we don't want that. Eventually, though, if you start getting into canning, I got a resource I'll link to below, which will tell you exactly how many pounds of uh, vegetables you need to get like a quart jar or a pint jar of canning or liter. But uh, anyways, uh, let's go through how me and my wife sized our garden. Now, we had experience gardening uh, before, and what we did was we just listed out what species of vegetable we would always want and uh, how many plants we were going to want. And then we added about 25% on top of that um, for, you know, random stuff that maybe we would decide well we'll try this one this year and that ended up getting us about 20 by 20 um, and that's a really good size you probably wouldn't want to go too much larger than this I mean when my kids get older I might go to a 20 by 40 like this garden here but uh, 20 by 20 provides an awful lot of food and a decent amount like a, a good amount of work um, so anyways that's part one part two how do we actually lay out and plan this garden well, for starters, you're going to need some kind of uh, graph paper with a grid. Now, I'm using engineering paper, which is really nice for this because every fifth line is a little bolder. So you always have a good idea of scale when you're drawing out your garden. I'll link to it down below if you want to get it. Um, it it's really cool stuff for a lot of things. But you're going to want to get some graph paper, some kind of a straight edge, and then a pencil and eraser. And then you're also going to want to get an idea of what kind of plants you want and quantities. Just kind of have a, a general idea. But the first step is you're going to sketch out the perimeter of your garden. But really try to draw your garden perimeter to scale. So in my case, every single little square represents one foot. So it's very easy. I can just go 20 by 20. Um, and this will allow us to safely space out our vegetables. But also note the directions north, south, east, and west. You really need to know this and keep this in mind and really in front of your face the whole time. If you have a gate, draw that too so you don't put plants in front of your gate. Um, you know, but then after that, we're going to start putting in our vegetables and our pathways. And uh, I start mine with a row of asparagus, which I already have on one side. They're perennial. They're just always there, so um, I just have to account for them. They don't take up much room, that, so that's okay. But uh, they're right along the fence, actually. But anyways, 
what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at what our typical heights and spacing are for our species and then sketching in our vegetables with the tallest vegetables going to the north side of the garden. We don't want tall plants to shade out small plants because photosynthesis is what feeds our plants. So I have a little spacing guide that I'll link to below that's very handy, handy for this where you can get the exact spacing uh, between rows and between plants as well as the height. Um, but you're going to carefully draw circles to represent these plants and how much area they're going to take up at full size. Now, if you have infertile soil, maybe you go a little tighter. If you have very fertile soil, use the big spacing. Um, you know, it's all about trying to get big plants that produce lots of fruit. Um, but carefully and methodically go through this and make sure you draw your pathways. Don't forget those. Account for those because if you have nowhere to walk to harvest your vegetables, you're going to be crushing your own fruit as you go try to find them. But uh, take your time, have some fun with it, and don't be afraid to use the eraser or try multiple layouts to uh, design your garden. Um, it's kind of like painting. You get, a, you get to create a layout and then you'll have to execute and grow it. But once you kind of get done with this, you start making a list of all the plants that you need to either grow on your own or purchase from the store. But it also gives you a pretty good idea of uh, what you can purchase so you don't end up buying too many tomato plants or too many pepper plants or you know getting spring fever or garden fever fever which many of us have gotten in the past i know i'm very guilty of that um, but this exercise uh, it's a very good one to do to get an idea of how much work you're going to have in front of you for the coming growing season and how much food you can expect to grow uh, for your family um, but anyways, uh, if you want to see what this looks like versus real life, because this was my garden layout last year, you can see the asparagus and tomatoes on the right, the path there versus the path that you see there. And then we can go to the next one. Again, we see the next row of tomatoes and peppers. And then finally, we'll see the row between the, uh, the low zucchini versus the cherry tomatoes and uh, hot pepper plants. And also note that all my tall tomatoes, which are the tallest things I got, are all to the north or except for the asparagus which are far to the east um, so after one hour nothing is getting shaded out and here we can see the south this is the south corner of my garden on the left so we're looking southeast to southwest and there's my little low zucchinis and spaghetti squashes and cayenne pepper plants they're never getting shaded out by anything now how densely you can pack your garden depends on how fertile your soil is if it's not so fertile you can pack it very tight if it's very fertile you want to space it more apart now if uh, when you're doing this, you want a quick reference, this video does exist in article format, which will be linked below. So you can look at that with the pictures and the steps. Um, and also your rows, do they go northwest or, or north, south or east, west? Doesn't matter. But if you're on a slope, uh, make sure that they go perpendicular to the slope, that the rows go perpendicular to the slope. And never put your tall plants to the south of your short plants. But let's review. Don't bite off more than you, than you can chew. Get a garden that's 20 by 20 or less, so don't take on too much, and watch out for your plant height and spacing and walkways. Now, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out quite a bit if you do. Be on the lookout for uh, more um, uh, videos for starting a vegetable garden, and I really want to thank you guys again. Y'all have a good one.